Okay, <clears throat> HTML. First of all, um, let's talk about information architecture. Websites are comprised of information, and the main role of a website is to convey that information to the uh, user that browses the website. Um, in order for information architecture to work, you have to organize information, you have to describe information, and you have to add navigation in order for you to move through the content. Uh, there are some KPIs that measure uh, how good the, an HTML interface is uh, by helping users uh, become more proficient quickly, by making the site scalable and maintainable, and creating and uh, helping uh, to enforce order in chaos. Because a website is chaos if you don't organize it properly. And that's what HTML does, more or less. Okay, uh, the idea is that um, as an HTML developer, as a front end developer in general, you have to be involved at the beginning of a project, if possible. You have to collaborate with designers and with other uh, programmers that build the back end and so on, and with uh, other people and stakeholders involved in the project. You have to structure the content and to be aware that you will decide what the content structure will be. You have to improve and um, make the navigation as easy as possible, and you have to write copy when needed. Uh, I mean. I'm sorry to say, but this work involves a lot of different other uh, areas and fields. So uh, a, a front-end developer is also a copywriter, and is also a, a UX designer, and so on, if the need arises. OK, so the basics of HTML. These are tags. Tags describe content. Um, this is a start tag, and this is an end tag. The tag is called HTML. And the brackets define that this is a tag. Anything that is between th these brackets is a tag. And uh, this is another example of a tag. It's self-closing. Um, this marks the closing of the tag. And the idea is that uh, if you have a, a bunch of text and you wrap it around some tags, you have an HTML document. HTML comes from hypertext markup language. And the markup language is a language that allows you to mark the content up. That means tell the, the browser or whatever other software you use what the content is. Describe the content, more or less. OK. Uh, this is an extension of the previous example. Um, these are called, called parent tags. So the HTML is a parent. And these are two children, the head and the body. Uh, <clears throat> A good uh, front-end developer will indent the children from the parents. And um, these between them, the head and the body, are siblings. So they're brother and sister, more or less. This is another extension of the previous example. We now have a doc type. This is a special tag used only once at the very beginning of an HTML file. And it defines the document type as HTML5. This is the latest version of HTML. Um, if you want to uh, find out uh, about all the other versions, I will uh, provide you with a link in the um, uh, link section of this uh, video. We have some additional tags here inside the head tag. We have a meta tag, which defines the, char the character set as the universal U UTF-8. We'll, we'll, we'll not talk about that, but uh, it's an important tag. Again, you see that the tags are indented to, to show that the, these are the children of this, which is the child of this. OK. This is a title. And um, this is important because you see this in the browser um, tab and in the search engine results page when you search for this page. Uh, in Google, this is the title of the page, the big, bold, blue thing. OK, these are other tags. I'm, I'm not going to talk about them. The idea is that um, this is starting to look like a real HTML5 page. And this is exactly what you see uh, when you look at the real uh, page in your browser. We'll come to that in a moment. OK, so uh, as you can see, these are two areas of the HTML tag, the head and the body. 
we've uh, talked about the head previously and the body is where the the visible content is well, the content in the head so the tags in the head uh, define meta content so content about content it's like going into um, I mean going into a pharmacy and buying a drug and uh, the uh, instructions are the meta meta content the meta tags and the actual pills are the content itself so a uh, piece of medicine is comprised of the instructions and the pills themselves and the pills themselves are here in the body okay this is an example of a page uh, I'll try and uh, visit it right now let's see if it's still alive <laughs> apparently it's not oh yes it is it's fine <clears throat> okay. Let's expand this a bit. So this is a web page. It's on medium.com, a website uh, that focuses on content and uh, articles. And this uh, art, this is an article, right? It has a title, some uh, description here, and the content itself, the text itself, right? Let's go back to our presentation for a bit. Um, as I said, just a second, please. Oh, sorry. Let me close that. Okay. So this is a page. This is a web page, and um, let's uh, we'll have a brief look at the at the source of this page. But you will see that it has an H1, which is the main header of the page, which is this view mode approach to responsive web design. It has an H2 tag, which which uh, is the let's say the description of uh, what comes next, and uh, some paragraphs and block quotes. These are four content tags. H1 is the most important header of the page. It's normally the title of the article, for example, in this case. H2 is, uh, so there are f uh, six H's, H1, H2 to H H6, and H2 is a subtitle. It defines basically what comes next and uh, uh, talks about it. P is, uh, comes from paragraphs. Uh, uh, it's, this is the, the core of the content on the web, more or less, and block quotes, are uh, uh, quotes that span for uh, uh, several uh, uh, phrases, let's say. In this case, they don't, but it's not important. It's the same tag. So a tag describes the content, as I've, uh, as I've told you. And uh, since we have this page, let's actually see what it looks like. I will view page source, and then any, any of you can do that. Uh, this, is not, this is minified, so you don't get to see very much. But fortunately, Google has the option to, let me close this for a bit, has the option to inspect. The inspector uh, makes the content a bit uh, easy to, easier to read. So if we right click and inspect this title, they change it to H2 in the meantime. <laughs> Not sure why. Uh, anyway, the idea is that this is a title, this is a subtitle, these are paragraphs, this is a block quote, and so on, right? So this is the, the content of a page, and even if it looks extremely complicated, for those of you that don't have uh, any clue what HTML is and what it looks like, this looks extremely, extremely convoluted and extremely large, but it's not really. Um, you will see that all of these uh, contents are very easy to, to understand and to use. And that's what makes HTML very, very usable in general, a very easy to learn language. Um, okay, uh, I've written, uh, so this is a presentation from the Frontend Academy. Um, it's uh, uh, an eight week uh, course we had with a few uh, people inside our company and trained them to become uh, front end developers and JavaScript engineers. And um, I've uh, designed uh, an actual example for them. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. 
um, I'll, I'll only mention an additional uh, insight here. So uh, we've talked about tags. These are tags, HTML, head, body, and so on. And the green ones here are properties of, the, of those tags. So if you see here, header has a class of site, site header. This is a property, the class property. Um, it's ideal that all the HTML you build has at least a class inside uh, each tag because you'll find out uh, a bit later that those classes are very useful in um, designing this HTML from this to this. Uh, we've already saw, saw it in action. I've skipped past this part. Um, this is the source of uh, the page. Uh, it's in another editor, but it's fine. <coughs> the idea is that um, this is the building, the main one of the main building blocks of the web. Everything you see online is built out of HTML, more or less. So we need to know how it functions, how it behaves, and what it actually does. Um, HTML uh, works very in a very simple way. Uh, the browser reads the HTML and interprets it. So as we've seen initially, this is the head and this is the body of the page. The head isn't highlighted in any way in the inspector. So just right click and inspect anywhere and collapse this. So you don't see the head highlighted anywhere because it's meta content. So all of this is content about content. You see some Twitter tags here, some Facebook tags, refers, description, titles, keywords, and so on. This helps the page uh, rank better and be used better in uh, various contexts. And this is the, the body of the page. This is the main um, part of, I mean, this is where the content is, more or less. OK. Um, the architecture here. Um, you don't need to worry about it initially because uh, this is uh, relatively complicated. But uh, we have a much simpler example, which I'm going to open and send you, of course, in the links attached to the video. So this is a page, a very simple page, which has a similar architecture uh, as the one we've seen before. It has a logo, two links as a menu, a title, a description, some paragraphs, a footer with a link and uh, some text, and a sidebar with two links. Right. <clears throat> if we uh, inspect it, let's right click and inspect it. It's a bit uh, easier to understand than the previous one. So you have the head. You don't need to worry about the head, but it has the same tags we've talked about. A meta char set UTF-8 to define uh, what type of types of letters and uh, symbols to use inside this page? A title, which is right here, front end academy. Front end academy. If I change this here, by the way, it will reflect here. So you can play with this as much as you want. You won't break anything because this is only on your browser. The meta tags we've talked about and so on. Um, what the, what does the browser do when you type in the address of this uh, HTML. It says, OK, this is an HTML type 5, right? Uh, version 5. OK, then I know how to interpret all the other tags that come, come uh, after it. This is the HTML tag. It's the parent tag of everything else on the page. You see that everything else is uh, a child of this. You have the head tag. This, this uh, allows the browser to behave in a certain way when reading what's next. And what's next is the content. Inside the body, we have a divider. This is a divider tag. It has a property called class, which I've talked about uh, before. It has basically two classes here, a framework and a container. Uh, as I've said, this helps uh, with uh, styling the content itself. But what does the browser do when he reaches this? OK, he, uh, the browser says, uh, I have a divider. I will create a box. This is a box. What you see here highlighted is a box. 
Inside this box, I will create several different boxes. The header box, the main box, the aside box, which is hidden because it's responsive. We'll talk about what responsive means in a minute. And the footer box. So all these are boxes. You can style them to look in a certain way, but if we remove the styling, the browser styles it uh, as a as it default. Uh, I mean, it defaults to a default styling, more or less. This is how it looks without the styling. This is how you described the content. And uh, as you see, uh, making this, I mean, the browser makes this bigger as default because this, if we inspect it, is the H1, the main header of the page. I'll refresh the page and come back to this. So the browser takes each tag in, in turn and acts upon it. It draws it, it downloads uh, images and other, other things to, to actually uh, make it behave like you ordered it to by writing the HTML. And um, we have, uh, uh, the previous presentation had a waterfall uh, analysis, but the, the main point that I'd like to make here is that anyone can write this. It's extremely easy. I'll just open this in, a, in an editor so you can see how it looks like we're a, with a, an easier interface. This is Notepad++. You can use any editor you like. We like uh, WebStorm, but uh, you can use Notepad, uh, vanilla Notepad if you like, to write HTML. Anyone, anyone can write HTML. The point is that it's easy to use and difficult to master. So writing good HTML is a bit harder. But as you can see, it's quite easy to read. You have the tags here, you have the properties, you have the content itself. It's indented, as I've said, so all the children are very visible. And uh, the point I'm making is that everyone who, um, who has interest in how the web works should first learn how HTML works. Uh, we'll come back with additional videos to describe the, the best practices for HTML and uh, where are the best resources to learn HTML. But uh, there should be an interest in all of you to find out at least the, the main principles of HTML because the, this HTML is the, one of the main building blocks of the, of the Internet and uh, this is how we uh, earn our living. Okay. This was the HTML presentation. Are there any questions? You're a very quiet crowd. Yeah. OK. Right, thank you. Let me close this.